Hi guys, I am Augustine from Augie Josh Entertainment and today I'm going to show you the review of the Dell Precision 5510. In my 8 months of use, I found that the Dell Precision 5510 particularly performed really well with screen and day-to-day -day tasks. Video editing, gaming performance was pretty decent I guess, but video performance, workstation CAD performance was much more better. So with this computer rocking a Intel Core i7-6700HQ, which you can see the sticker on the right. It's rocking a NVIDIA Quadro M1000M graphics card, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of SK Hynix solid state drive, SATA, and of course, there will be ports. On the left hand side, you have the power in DC in 4.5 mm 130 watts. You have USB Type A 3.0, you have HDMI 1.4, Thunderbolt 3, and headphone jack on the left. On the right, you have the USB 3.0 Type A SD card slot, battery indicator, Kensington lock slot, and of course that lit power button whenever it's turned on. This computer is also well machined with aluminium on the outside, CNC machining, very nice, beautiful, of course quite prone to stains, but when you go on the inside, it's that carbon fiber finish. I would say the keyboard is rather typable, the experience is not great, but this is how the Dell Precision keyboard is positioned and put together. I prefer the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon's keyboard. The screen is really gorgeous. It fulfills 100% sRGB color gamut space on the Full HD matte display which is this one. And if you upgrade it to the 4K the glossy touch display, you get 100% Adobe RGB, 98% DCI-P3 and you get 100% sRGB. Battery life on this machine is <coughs> decent. It gives me about 5 to 6 hours of daily use when I go to class, write notes, do my assignments. I'm roughly getting about 5 to 6 hours of battery life, but if you want, I can extend the battery up to 8 hours on a single charge. The laptop takes about 2 hours to charge on Dell's Express Charge technology with a 56 watt hour battery and on normal primarily AC charge, you take about 3 hours to charge the laptop up. Performance on this guy is pretty decent, especially in video editing like I showed you just now. Now this is a 4K resolution video that I'm going to play back on Adobe Premiere Pro and see if you can edit it because there might be a few drop frames but overall it's still editable and not much performance complaints. And here we go. So now the video I started this is a 4K video that we've recorded but I've also edited the video and now I'm just playing back the edited video at 4k resolution 60 frames per second it doesn't look like 60 frames per second because well you can tell that the computer is still initializing the video it's still conforming but after it's done conforming everything is editable it's great it's nice the experience is buttery smooth now let's move on to gaming performance. Now gaming performance is rather decent and of course you can play Minecraft, games like Minecraft. You can do many many things on this computer and well but if you're on battery you'll throttle really badly. So I advise that whenever you want to play games, whenever you want to edit videos, please plug in because then you increase the performance of the computer. Right now I'm going to show you what it's like to play. It's a bit laggy right now because the, the CPU is being throttled down due to the battery not supplying enough juice, but it's fine. For normal web processing, email, web browsing, it's pretty much okay. <coughs> the performance is good, it's decent, but when it comes to games, you might want to look at more. You might want to get more power out of the AC brick. On the 130 watt brick, if you use the Thunderbolt 3 dock, then you come with I think 240 watt brick. I'm not sure, but correct me if I'm wrong. The solid state drive speeds are really, 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 really fast. 
though they are say the speeds they can be quite comparable to PCIe NVMe drives in day to day use therefore if you look at web browsing if you look at probably starting up a word document it's really snappy it's really on the go however if you're looking to import big files on the Premiere Pro files that are like 30 gigs big 40 gigs big 500 gigabytes big you might be looking forward to a PCIe drive now this computer is also really really powerful it comes with two fans it's quite loud when it's on load and pretty much basically when you go to sleep and you want to export your videos do not put your computer beside you trust me your sleep will be interrupted because of the noise of the fan this computer has really nice bezels thin bezels i have one complaint <coughs> with thin bezels even though it's kind of luxury gaming kind of luxury working but look at the bottom look at this camera down here look at it look at it it's re it really makes you look quite unglam and it's not very nice and i'll do a demo on the webcam hi guys this is how the webcam looks and this is how my voice sounds like with the computer's inbuilt microphone and webcam and of course the audio on this computer is rather clean i should say as this computer has quite a good speakers though it's not the best the macbook pro 2016 2017 models have better speakers but this is how the speakers sound like and this is how the how the speakers sound like really nice backlit keyboard and glass trackpad with windows precision drivers so probably if this hardware is powerful it comes in a slim package nicely machined aluminium then i think you guys might be asking how about thermos how about when i stress my cpu and my gpu to like whoa max loads and how about the keyboard experience does it feel hot well i can tell you it does feel hot when you expose it to prolonged stress testing but when you are playing games when you're editing videos it only feels a little warm thanks to the carbon fiber finish on the laptop thank you for watching this video as always like and subscribe but if you dislike it hit the dislike button Thank you and see you again.